What's going on everybody, man, Mike is back with another video. Back here to talk about One UI 5.1 that just dropped for a bunch of Galaxy devices, including the S22 Ultra, the S22 Plus, the S22, the S21 line, the S20 line, the Z Fold 4, the Z Fold 3, and the Z Flip 3. But not the Z Flip 4 as of today, Super Bowl Monday, <laughs> the day after the Super Bowl. So interesting to see that the Flip 4 didn't get the treatment, but we do have the S22 Ultra here in house before the S23 Ultra arrives to demonstrate some of the features that they did drop for One UI 5.1 for the previous older devices. So let's get into it. Now, before we do, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that way you know my videos. So it's a bet you like to see what's cracking. Now let's get into the video and upon screen recording, we are here live on my home screen for the S22 Ultra. And one of the things you're gonna notice immediately after the update is how smooth the experience is. I mean, it is just smooth. Now, of course, while recording, I think it bumps down to like 60 frames per second, but still, being able to swipe from the Google Discovery feed throughout using the phone, flipping up to my you know, custom good lock app drawer, being able to swipe up and down on it now, you're gonna notice general improvements, but the fluidity and smoothness is here on the S22 Ultra as it is for the S23 Ultra. Of course, it's probably not as great as the S23 Ultra, but the S22 Ultra still is a beast mode phone. So you're gonna notice those general improvements. Now, in terms of the camera, there's improvements there, both in terms of improving the camera software, but also being able to reach settings. So one of the things that you can do within the camera settings app now is access camera assistant which is within good lock we'll get on we'll touch on that later but what you can also do now is while trying to take a selfie you can change the tonality the color tone of the picture to make it brighter to make it more natural and then one of the other things i noticed maybe it was not just with one ui 5.1 but you can even change aspects of your face you can change the smoothness, of course, and as you guys can see with my video, <laughs> I'm probably displaying to you right now, I'm sliding the smoothness to see how it smooths out my features in my face, but I don't like that on at all. You can also adjust the jawline, and you'll notice my face here, it will shrink in and, sh and then expand back out, so a little bit of augmented uh, reality going on there being able to shape up your jawline you can change how big your eyes are right like pretty interesting and then of course you have tone in terms of being able to change the color of making it brighter i guess or again a little more shadowy i guess with that feature or you can just completely turn it off but i noticed that you could do that with some settings there for the selfie so that's interesting i turn it off but again, if we want to, we can jump right into good lock because I'm really only highlighting camera assistant. A lot of the other features are still here from One UI 5. Nothing really new from that perspective. Expert Raw also updated to be able to provide more features there as well. But we're gonna jump into good lock and then we're gonna jump right into camera assistant to highlight some of the new things that are here. So upon going to camera assistant, now we have picture softening. So I have it off of course, but you can change it between medium and high. And then you can also do auto lens switching. I did have it on at one point, I toggled it off, but it will automatically switch between your zoom lens and your, I would imagine your ultra ride, depending on the lighting and the framing of the situations that you're in to then auto switch your lenses for you. You can also do quick tap shutter. This is different because this isn't necessarily cutting back on the quality of your photos to, to be able to achieve a faster shot. But what is, is if you change your capture speed. For me, I have prioritized quality. It's not as big of a deal for me. I, I could always go with the middle feature with balancing speed and quality. So that way I don't lose as much quality, which is fine. They even tell you in the basically warning <laughs> or details below, Prioritize quality for the best pictures. Prioritize speed to capture pictures as fast as possible. Balance speed and quality for faster capturing without sacrificing too much quality. So the fact that they worded it with too much quality lends me to believe you might lose a little bit more quality than you think to achieve faster shutter speeds. So for me, I'm just gonna leave it on prioritize quality and with the quick tap 
shutter, I believe I can accomplish faster shots and without losing quality. So that's what I'm doing. And then of course you can video record in photo mode, which is already here. And you can now dim screen while recording. That feature was not here prior to 1 5.1. It's here now. So those are the camera features that have been improved upon for One UI 5.1. Another feature is in the phone app, if you go to settings, now Bixby Text Call has English. And so of course I have mine activated, I'm using Voice One. And you can even have quick responses and you can add your own quick responses. So if you go in here, these are the ones that's already here, you can add more, you can edit. And I would imagine these are the ones that you can press on or that Bixby will talk to the person calling you to respond. And then of course the voices, you can have up to four, you can download more, but I didn't see any more. I guess it goes into the Galaxy Store for those voices. The other language of course is Korean, but I'm, I speak English, so I'm gonna use English. And I like the fact that Call Background adds additional features such as videos. Uh, or more video selection. So you can press the plus icon and it will give you options to select from your gallery or create AR emojis. If it will play mine, this is mine right here. And I am using the video sound from this video for the ringtone. And you know, I dance, you know what I'm saying? So of course I'm gonna use a dance one for me as my call background when somebody's calling me. So I like that. It's a little fun, a little playful. And it just adds a little bit of personal touch to your own Galaxy device. The other thing that Samsung has added and brought to these older devices is, if I can remember here, one thing it didn't bring is the auto sticker feature basically. So if you press and hold on an object within a picture or a frame, as of right now, it's not here. It must be a feature that's that's limited to the S23 line. But if you press and hold on an, on, a, on an image, you can copy and paste it or turn it into a sticker like you can on an Apple device. They have that ability here on Samsung now, but it's with the S23 line, not the S22 and below. The other thing that I like that they added is you can now change your wallpapers with each of your modes. So let's go into settings, let's go to modes and routines. I don't like the fact that after this update they changed my settings page because I reorganized this and it deleted it for some reason. But if we go to modes when sleeping, I did the same thing here. I did a lock screen, a wallpaper, and a watch face. So at night I darken things for my device, so that way it's easier on the eyes, easier to get to sleep a lot faster. So I definitely like that they added those features to modes, and of course, Routines has implemented more features for you to use to automate with quick share and other abilities such as already implemented quick commands. They've added more to those as well. Now, the fun part that I like is that they've improved the weather widget and the weather app. So going into the weather app, as you guys can see, they've added some more touch with more animations there with this person here. It's nice and warm in Warner Robins today. Thank you. I'm very tempted to go play basketball today, but I'm very tired as well. But now, as you see right above the weather there, it, it tells you clear, low overnight in the upper 30s. They didn't tell you that before, and they've even kind of revamped and optimized the weather app a little bit as well. So upon moving it, you see how the animations move, the weather changes up top. It makes you actually want to come into this app more often to gain information and insight into your weather forecast. And I like that this bar right here changes colors. So it lets you know it gets, it basically gets warmer. So it goes from like gray to like yellow as it rises in temperature or it lowers in temperature. So I also like that, lets you know about the trending, now tomorrow's temperature and then of course a forecast for like a week's worth of time and as you see it's going to get warmer throughout the week which is great because i have more opportunities to play basketball i'm sorry i'm saying i gotta take care of my health you know and then of course as you scroll down you get all additional more weather information that you would like you know and i'm glad that they revitalized this page a lot and of course i have other locations that i've visited or i've lived so the weather widget has came a long way for samsung devices now what i like about the widgets is they've also been improved. Mainly this widget right here, they I think they actually increased the size of those 
weather icons or climate icons down at the bottom, but they also emboldened 68 degrees or the temperature. They, it's more bold lettering now, so it, it adds a little more pop to it. But if we scroll over to my free page here, uh, actually, I don't need to do that. I actually brought one in over here. If I swipe here, now the dynamic weather widget adds that little character and additional animation there as well to kind of fill in that space. One of my biggest complaints about the dynamic weather widget app for Samsung is that space. It was just too much space, too little information. Now, of course, in my personal opinion, I would still like to see the high and low for the day in this widget because you could argue there's still space for it. You could shrink the person and put it somewhere in there as well. They can still add more weather information as opposed to animations within the widgets. That's something that I hope that they do bring, but I do like the fact that it's here for our one UI 5.1 update. And that's pretty much the updates that I've been able to catch. A lot of it has been more or less improving on the features they already added from one UI 5. Nothing extra extravagantly new. You can do more smart suggestions, search suggestions. There's been improvements there, but overall it's been a somewhat smaller update, but a much needed update. It still came in at 2.1 gigabytes, but that's because there's a lot of improvements under the hood that we needed. And we see the fruits of that, at least I do right now, <laughs> as of using this software. A bit of a hit on the battery, but it makes sense. Usually when you update something new, it's gonna have a slight hit in battery for a little bit. But I, I definitely can see tomorrow being way better on battery life. And from what I've heard with the S23 Ultra, battery life is very, very solid. So I'm sure that's a part with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip but then also the software becoming so much better on the Galaxy platform. So let me know down in the comment section below some of your favorite features that you like to use on your Galaxy devices. Do you use Good Lock? Do you use Good Guardian? Let me know down in the comment section below. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys like the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. So that way that's my video. So that way you should like, see what's cracking with you, man. Mike is signing out to the next video. Woo, I'm ready for that S23 Archer. What color y'all think I got? Until then, <laughs> wait for